bacteria. We know that it's involved with acne, and we know that it's all over our bodies and our face. But let's specifically discuss Propionibacterium acnes to understand exactly what this bacteria is, what happens when it takes over your face, and how most products or treatments are trying to control or decrease it so that you don't have to break out. So since this acne bacteria is literally sharing your face with you, let's understand it a little bit more. Side note, P. acnes was actually given a new name back at the end of 2016. It's now scientifically referred to as Cutibacterium acnes. Its main classification is still Propionibacterium, and a lot of new medical research still refers to it as P. acnes, and for the sake of this video, that's what we'll be calling it. But just know that if you see Cutibacterium acnes or any C. acnes, it's our good old friend, the acne bacteria, that's being referred to. From a medical or scientific standpoint, it can sound really overwhelming. Propionibacterium acnes is a gram-positive, rod-shaped, anaerobic, aerotolerant bacteria. Now, what the heck does that all mean? Essentially, these are classifications that microbiologists and scientists use to classify bacteria. The cool thing about some scientists is that they actually give bacteria makeovers. That's right. They use special dyes in order to literally change the color of the bacteria to see what their structure is. And for acne, happens to be gram positive, which refers to what color they are after they're stained. Now these little bacteria are also rod shaped. Just the way our bodies come in many different shapes and sizes, so does bacteria. These ones happen to look like little noodles. Next, what does anaerobic and atolerant mean? Well, anaerobic means without oxygen. So therefore, the acne bacteria likes to hang out in areas that there is not a lot of air, essentially in your face. And like we've mentioned in previous skin science videos, if there is a clog, those bacteria like to have a party. Many doctors, dermatologists, and specialists prescribe antibiotics for acne. And the reason why is because when taking antibiotics, they literally kill bacteria in your skin. Antibiotics can be great for decreasing those numbers of P. acnes bacteria, but at the same time, it can also be unhealthy because there are many different types of bacteria that live on our skin and in our gut that our body needs to function. So a lot of new research has been coming out on this. There's a lot to explain. And we're actually going to dive into antibiotics in a future skin science episode. So make sure that you've tickled the subscribe and notification bell buttons if you haven't already. Another interesting thing about this P. acnes bacteria is that it doesn't just live on your face. Scientists have actually found P. acnes in your mouth and in your gut as well. So it really lives in many different places of our body. Additionally, antibodies of P. acnes have been found in the blood of people who have had acne and people who never have. It just literally goes to show that for thousands of years, this bacteria has been a part of our biology. This is also why acne is not considered an infectious disease. Although it can be physically painful and emotionally taxing, because it's something that we all have and that lives on our skin, it's not considered atypical or abnormal. Therefore, it's not seen as a disease. Scientists, especially over the past hundred years, have done a lot of research on P. acnes, and there's actually over 50 different strains. But the main thing that you need to remember is that this P. acnes bacteria lives in healthy skin, but when it gets out of control, it starts to cause issues. Now again, this bacteria likes the oxygen-deprived environment of your pores, and it likes to eat this oil. It's like food for the bacteria. But just the way we as humans produce waste after we eat, so do bacteria. And these little noodle looking bacteria create a lot of different compounds, many of which can be inflammatory. The P. acnes bacteria creates things like polypeptides or cytokine inducing factors, or even extracellular peptides. Remember peptides? Amino acids turn into peptides, which turn into proteins in the skin. These extracellular ones live outside the cell. This is all well and good if the bacteria is under control, but with too many of them creating all of these compounds, basically creates a big bubble and a big party inside your skin. Now, your body is pretty smart. So guess what happens when something goes wrong? 
your body's immune system fires all of the alarms and says, hey guys, something's going on here and we need to deal with it. The body then sends its blood cells from white blood cells to T cells and everything in between to try to take care of that issue, especially if it's becoming an infection. If you fall down and scrape your knee, if you get a paper cut, or even if you just twist your ankle, the area gets inflamed, it gets red, and it can even start to hurt. Well, that's what inflammation is. It's the body starting to clean up whatever's going on there. But unfortunately, when this happens in the skin, it really stretches out this pore. It's very taxing and the pore is only so big. So it starts to grow kind of like a balloon in the skin. And especially if it's got that clog on top, it has nowhere else to go. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with pimples popping up in the skin. Did you know that pimples can actually pop inside of your skin as well? When a pimple pops down or out, it actually ruptures this entire structure. And that can create even more inflammation and it can send this bacteria and a lot of these intercellular lipids, these fats and oils and this debris into the rest of the skin and it gets picked up by the bloodstream. Because you remember from episode two, the dermis is connected to these tiny vessels. When a pimple breaks within the skin like this, it's usually nodular or more cystic acne. And naturally, it's happening down here near all these nerve cells and other structures, which is why cystic acne is usually much more painful. So with all this bacteria in our skin, how are we supposed to treat it? There are many different ways that doctors, products, and even lifestyle tries to do this. Again, this is a bacteria that's in the skin. So if we use tactics to get rid of the bacteria, we might be able to help. If you've ever used benzoyl peroxide on your acne, you know that it's a pretty powerful ingredient. Not only does it stain pillow sheets, but it actually kills bacteria. When applied topically, it can go into this pore and kill bacteria that's on top of and inside of the skin, therefore killing some of the P. acnes bacteria. Doctors, dermatologists, and specialists also prescribe antibiotics. Antibiotics are normally taken orally, and once they go through the digestive system and get into the small and large intestines, they break down, and they help to get rid of bacteria all over your body. Now, here's the issue. While these methods are effective at getting rid of bacteria, if you remember, bacteria is an important part of the skin. Even this P. acnes needs to be there in a certain amount. And as the literature and as the studies start to roll in, we're realizing that perhaps antibiotics are not always the best choice. Or maybe there are other ways of controlling this bacteria that don't kill all of the bacteria or the other organisms on our skin. This science is all currently happening, and it's something that we're researching and will be discussing here in Skin Science. But at least for today, you understand a little bit more about this bacteria, and you have a little bit more information about the options you have to treat them. I believe that we all deserve to know how our skin works, the biology of our bodies, the chemistry of our cosmetics, and once we have this information, we should be able to apply it in ways that match our morals and values, and that keep us and our skin healthy and happy. Skin science is where we do that every single Saturday at 11 a.m. So go ahead and use your motor neurons to tickle that like button, hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss it, and I'll see you here every single week where we discuss more about acne and the science of skin. Until then, always remember to be beautiful and stay hydrated. I'll see you next Saturday on Skin Science.